Welcome to another episode of Why I Believe on My Road to Hope and Peace. We are James and Jody Evanson, uh, the hosts of Why I Believe, and tonight we are very privileged to have Andy and Tammy Reed join us live from Kansas City via Zoom. Tonight's episode of Why is live, so you are welcome to ask questions in the chat. We may be able to answer some of those, those questions tonight. Coach Andy Reed is the head coach of the Super Bowl winning Kansas City Chiefs uh, national football team. He is one of the most winningest head coaches in NFL history and has coached his teams to four Super Bowl appearances, winning two of them with the Chiefs. He is considered one of the greatest coaches in NFL history. We know how busy your schedule must be, so we are really excited that you're willing to spend some time with us this evening. We had a sign in our home a few years ago that said, Faith, Family, and Football. And we're sure that has been a much bigger theme in your home over the years. So we look forward to hearing about your experiences of faith, family, and football tonight. So um, let's start with Andy and um, Tammy. How did you meet each other? Um, we met at BYU. I'll let her tell the story. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's not the biggest story, but we met on the tennis courts. We were both PE majors and met during tennis class, and he didn't ask me out until badminton the next half of the semester. But after that, that's got going. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any idea <clears throat> that football was going to be a part of your family? <clears throat> rather than tennis and badminton no I did I had no earthly idea in fact I I didn't even know what his major was at the time so I just thought he was a PE major like me so who knew where he was going with it <laughs> what were you majoring in Andy at the time yeah, I was I was doing phys ed I switched over to phys ed and uh uh I was loving every minute of it um I, I got my minor in English and uh, just in case I needed to be an English teacher, I did my student teaching in English, and so I was uh, ripping and ready to go for the phys ed part of it. I played for the great Lavelle Edwards uh, at BYU, and uh, I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to meet a lot of great guys and, and uh, a special lady here that I could hang out with for the rest of my life and throughout eternity. <laughs> I love it. Now you said that he didn't ask you out until badminton. So you must have had your eyes on him. I had my eye on him and he was one of the first guys I couldn't get to ask me out when I kind of wanted him to. So it took me a little bit, but I did. He could beat me at tennis and he could beat me at badminton. And so I said, well, I could probably beat you at racquetball. So he's like, well, let's play racquetball then. So we had a, uh, I, it wasn't really a first date, but we went to play racquetball and he beat me again, but that was okay because I got the ask. From there, I just kept working it. So, <laughs> so tell tell us a little bit about your family. Um, well, we uh, had five children. Our oldest one passed away almost eleven years ago, but our son and daughter in law live out in Overland Park, Kansas, and have three children. And our daughter lives in Leewood, Kansas, and she has three children. And that's Crosby. The first one's Britt and Kristen. And um, Drew and Devin, our daughter and son-in-law, live in Michigan. And they have three grandchildren for us. And then Spencer and Maggie. Spencer's the baby. And Maggie, they live in Lee Summit, uh, Missouri. He just actually moved here and he's working for the Chiefs. And they have three grandchildren for us. And we just had the 12th six weeks ago. So, Congratulations. That's so exciting. Well, tell us how you began your career in football. Obviously, you played for BYU. I did. I played for BYU. Coach Edwards asked, actually asked me if I had ever thought of going into coaching. I told him I really hadn't at that time. And he said, well, you might want to try it. You know, it's uh, you, you might be good at that. And um, so I did. And he paid for my education through graduate school and that. So um, I, I gave it a whirl, loved it, and kept on going. So uh, he was a big inspiration, uh, great mentor, um, tremendous teacher. Uh, and I, I, tell, I tell young people, I go, yeah, I mean, I play for Lavelle Edwards. First of all, he's a Hall of Fame coach. Um, had that opportunity to play for him. And then when I left BYU, he, he and I talked once a week 
for the rest of his life. And uh, that doesn't happen. That's just not, that's a, that's a special, that's a special person to uh, want to do that with some young whippersnapper that, uh, that is trying to be a coach, but he, he really, he took care of me all the way through. And I joked that he, I think he thought I was, he was responsible for talking me into doing this thing. So he, he would talk with me, but um, he, he was great. He was great. A great mentor. Now, how, how has uh, faith in Jesus Christ helped you balance such a demanding career with your family and everything? How has that been part of your life? Yeah, well, the thing, I, we, we live our, our faith. So it's, uh, um, it, it's something that we, we carry over into our professions. We carry it over into our day-to-day -day life. I'm not changing when I go to work and have to put on a, a show, a gruff guy attitude or anything. When I'm there, I'm, I'm there to teach, and which we know in the church is a is a huge thing. We know we're here to teach, and so I carry that over to uh, to football, and and then um, and then the young men that I get to work with, I mean, are phenomenal. So I have a chance to uh, teach them, many of which uh, come from single parent homes. So. You know, you, you have you have an opportunity to share with them, uh, you know, a family atmosphere, and and we're all about family in the church. We're all about family, so we we carry that right into the the Hunt family. Actually, that we work for, uh, they're not members of the church, but they're they are Christians, and they uh, they're huge uh, in the family. So it's uh, um, you know, but but again, um, we live we try to live a Christ like life uh, we've got a great example i always tell people he's the head coach uh, of this whole show here so uh um and he, he's a he's been a great teacher for us he's he's left things for us to uh follow and and so we we try to do that to the best of our abilities that's awesome now tammy did you have a career before you had your your children or are you the um i i didn't not really um when we met um, he was not a member of the our church faith, so uh, I had to convert him first. But right after we got married, I had quit going to school, and he was getting his master's. And I worked for Johnny Miller, who's a golfer in our, and he's in our faith as well. And I babysat for their family when we were first married until we started our family. So that's what I did. How, how have you had to balance your family and that your husband's busy career? Did you see him ever? <laughs> yeah, we, we actually do. He he's pretty good about you know when he needs to be needed, he gets home and stuff. But um, I feel like it's my job to let him know that. But every, we've moved. All five of our children were born in a different state, so we've been around a lot. And my job is just to hold down the fort. And the thing I love about our church is that no matter where we move, I have a church to go to and a congregation that just brings us in, welcomes us, and we can become a part of their family and just um that's where my faith comes in that I know that we're going to be okay no matter where we move and um he's very good about we we calendared for years with our kids and our family and he would know what we're, I'm doing with the kids even though he doesn't need to know where the we're going to the dentist he still knew that and things like that so we were on the same page so that we both knew what was going on with each other's lives and when he got home he got home it was great took it took his hat off when he was home i love that <laughs> so so where does that uh faith in christ and that kind of hope that the two of you have where does that originate from yeah I, mine is uh i mean i always believed in in christ i mean growing up uh my parents had us go to church uh not really on a consistent basis but through the holidays normally and and that um but I, I always believed in Christ. And then when I went to BYU, that just increased uh, my, my knowledge in it through the religion classes and such. So that, that we took and talking to people there and uh, teammates were great, great examples. Um, and, and so I grew, I grew there and uh, ended up like, like Tam said, joining, joining the church there. But I, I actually went home to all my buddies back in Los Angeles, California, to join the church, none of which were members of the church, but um, I wanted to make sure that I 
I, I did that around my friends so they could they could see and um you know the lord works in funny ways i, I know the missionaries are around the house there but um, i had two special missionaries that that taught me and one of which i had played against uh in, in high school or had a, a connection with in high school football in los angeles he had moved away to texas and then came back on his mission to um to los angeles so I, you know and then the other guy was a hockey player and they're crazier than football players so i'm going this was kind of a special thing these two guys uh i was able to really connect with they were great teachers too and um uh, you know it was a great example of how how the lord works uh, through faith and for me, I feel like just being a mom and raising five kids, you, I had to have a Christ-centered home because if I didn't pray every day, things probably would not have gotten done the way they should have or divine intervention or whatever. I, I feel like I was always being guided by the Holy Ghost to do things as a mom and to be somewhere and to raise the kids that way. And we always had scripture study and family home evening. So those were just things that helped our home uh, be a be a place where our kids could come and be safe from the outside world. So that that was my job. And that's what my belief in Christ was to have a Christ centered home. That's beautiful. I love that. Um, so maybe walk us through your career a little bit. You started by playing college football and then. Where did you go step by step after that? Uh, so from there, I went to San Francisco State, and there were some connections between Coach Edwards and the head coach Vic Rowan at San Francisco State. So um, Mike Holmgren and I kind of switched positions. He had been at San Francisco State. I was I was at BYU. I went there. He came to BYU. So um, and then I was there for a couple of years, and and then uh, headed to Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff, Arizona. We were there just for ten months. No children were born there. 11 months, 23 days. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> not that you're counting. Yeah, no. <laughs> not that we're counting. Long enough to buy a house and sell yes. a house. And yeah. then uh, yeah, then we, we went to University of Texas at El Paso, UTEP, and uh, had a great, great stay there for a couple of years. And we're lucky enough to be on a team that ended up going to the Independence Bowl. And just by chance, a quarterback for Southern Miss was Brett Favre, who I ended up having a chance to coach and uh, in the at the NFL level in Green Bay, and then uh, from the University of Texas El Paso, the whole staff we moved right back here to Missouri, and uh, we're at the University of Missouri in Columbia. It's a couple hours from Kansas City here, so um, I, we got to know this area and how how rich it is in in church history and so on, and um, and, and so we, we were able to come come here knowing people and kind of knowing the area and knowing what to expect, but. Uh, from from uh, Missouri, then went to Green Bay with Mike Holmgren. He now was he then became the head coach. He had been at San Francisco with the 49ers, won a couple of Super Bowls, and then headed to Green Bay and was able to go up there and stay there for seven years. And I was fortunate enough to be around a few different Hall of Famers and and really get introduced to the National Football League uh, and the competitiveness and all with with some great players. And then. Uh, from there, I think we were there seven years, and then we went to Philadelphia. I went there um, as a head coach, and by the way, she she goes by the the uh, the head coach of the head coach. So she, <laughs> when I say I went there, she was kind of leading me there. So it was a uh, so we went to the Eagles, and uh, we were there for fourteen seasons, and and had a great experience. Uh, and even though we were dismissed from there. Um, we, we have great relationship with all the people there. They're phenomenal people. The owner, from the owners to the general manager to the head coach there now, they've, they've done a great job. And we're lucky enough to play them this past Super Bowl. And then from, from uh, Philadelphia, we, we came to uh, Kansas City and we, we just finished our 10th year, I believe it was. Ten yeah, 10th yeah. season. So uh, we're on to number 11 here, but it's, uh, it's been a phenomenal ride. A lot of great people that we've met. Uh, great, like Tam mentioned, the great thing about the church and the great thing about families uh, is that you you have your best friends that you're moving with, and you're making a bunch of new friends once you uh, once you get to church. So it's it's been it's been good that way. And listen, there have been ups and downs. I mean, I, we're we're sitting here talking. I mean, we we've, we've had our ups and downs as a family, and there's challenges that everybody's had. So we're not trying to paint the the pretty picture here, but you know, we've had our challenges and. 
And uh, we're just lucky that we have the foundation of the church uh, to bank on during those times. So it's, uh, it's been, fun. it's been great that way. Thank you. You know, um, I was talking to one of your former uh, teammates in BYU, Craig Christensen, and he mentioned that um, one of your real skills coach is uh, your, the strength of the relationship that you connect, that you create with the players. Um, can you maybe just share a little bit about what it's like to coach these really phenomenal young athletes to, who often are making millions of dollars? And uh, how, do you, how do you connect with them and help them get to the level that they can achieve? Yeah, sometimes we hear the, the dirty stories about the, the, the different athletes that might get into trouble. I, those are far and few between. I, I just, uh, although they get the most exposure, but all the good that these guys do, they have such big hearts and they care about, they care about kids. They care about family. They, um, they, 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 they're willing to work hard and, um, you know, it gives you this faith in the future. When I, when I do, I'm getting older, I look in the mirror and I'm turning gray and I'm getting older. These guys are all staying the same age. When they get a little bit older, they, they move on and go do something else. So I'm, I'm around this great energy every day. And I mean, I love that part. I love the different personalities. I want them to show their personalities. I want to be proud of it, you know, what they are, where they came from, all those things. So, um, you know, I, I'm fortunate to do what I do that way. Great, great human beings, though. And that that's how, that, listen, that's how I go about it. I mean, I, um, I was lucky enough to grow up in Los Angeles around a lot of different uh, ethnic groups, religions, and um, it was uh, that that experience helped me know that there's good in everybody, and there you know everybody's got good and bad. I mean that's uh, there, there's there, there's a there there are things in there that um, you can take any faith re or, or any uh, race, and uh, there's going to be a couple of bad beans here, and you know a lot of good, a lot of good. So um, you know you you just understand that they're people first, and. Uh, that's we give everybody a chance uh, to be to be successful. That's what that's what we're trying to do as teachers. So yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, well, Tammy, you mentioned that you had a tragedy in your family eleven years ago. Would you be willing to share a little bit about um, about how you handled such a difficult challenge in your life? Yes. Yeah, so um, our son Garrett passed away from a drug overdose at training camp with Andrew and I was in California. So he had to call me and it was one of those, it was the worst experience you could ever have, but it ended up being one of the greatest experiences we could have ever have. And he called me and he said, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but can we do this in two days? I'm like, why not? I mean, we just, so we had a funeral two days after he passed away and we thought it was just be small, just family. And we had friends that just jumped in and helped and me and the girls flew back to Pennsylvania and we we had this amazing funeral with thousands of people I, it's probably about a thousand people that came in people from all over the NFL friends from all over the United States I'm sorry if I get a little choked up but um but because of our faith we know why we're here and where we're going and that we will see him again and that we will be together as an eternal family. And so that's the faith that got us through that. And so I think people were kind of surprised that we were so okay. And, um, you know, we cried for a couple of days and then just got back into it and, and had to go on with life. I mean, we had, I had, we had four more children that we had to continue to raise and get through things. And he, he went right back to work. And that's one of those things that, was a decision for us. Maybe everybody wouldn't make that decision, but that's what was best for our family and our kids and everybody around us. So, but it ended up being an amazing experience. The people that we got to see and lives that we touched and people that learned what we were all about. Yeah. Wow. You have such strength. Coach, do you have anything to share about your experience with that challenge? Yeah. Um, that, listen, you, you don't want to say that during the tough times, that's when you bank on your faith. I don't want that to come across that way because we, we live our faith. And, but it's, it's a great foundation to have. And, and, and in particular, when something like that happens. However, I think during the good times, 
you've got to level off too. So we're not getting too high or, or too low um, as we, we try to raise our family and be examples to them. So uh, I think that's that the church helps us with that. And we understand that there are going to be these tremendous hurdles that you have to get over. And, and, uh, and, and but again, you're, you're saying your prayers, you're reading your scriptures, you're doing the base fundamentals. Uh, you can get through these things and, and, and stay strong, still hurt, but stay strong. Well, thank you for sharing that with yeah. us. So coach, do you have any, um, what you'd consider defining moments of your coaching career? Some things that really st stand out. I'm sure the Super Bowl, but anything else? Well, I joke, I've, I've been lucky to coach some good uh, quarterbacks. That's a yeah. defining moment for, for a head coach. Those guys have a, they, they wear those like merit badges when they can, they can have one of their assistant coaches become a, become a head coach. So I've been lucky enough to have some great quarterbacks. I'm sitting here with with Pat Mahomes now as, as one of my quarterback, as my quarterback. And uh, so we're, we're, we've won two championships here. And, uh, and this is in my, you know, 40th year of coaching, whatever it is. And, um, and here I'm sitting with two championships and uh, as a, as a group, as an organization team, and um, that that's something special. So I, I'm not sure what the defining moments are. I, uh, I, uh, or where you find that that drive I love to teach and uh, obviously we're in America so we're in this competitive sport so we like to win um, and I've been lucky enough to have a lot of guys that like to do that and work hard so my defining moments are kind of when I go to work every day if I can get out of bed, go to work that's a good defining moment <laughs> now, now you 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 coach uh, Patrick Mahomes do you ever sit there and watch what he does and just get amazed. I mean, all of us watching him do what he does, especially in slow motion, it is hard to believe what he can do with that football. Does it surprise you on a regular basis? I tell, I tell my coaches, uh, we'll be sitting in a staff meeting, watching our practice and going through it, making sure we, we get some notes down before we go present it to the players. And, and, uh, and Pat will do some crazy thing with the football. And I go, don't ever get used to this. Just cherish, cherish every one of these that you can. Uh, they're special. And, and so, I, like I said, I've been around some good ones. Um, and, and you just can't, you can't take that for granted. We're fortunate that things lined up where we've got these good football coaches and we've got these good players. That doesn't always happen that way. And we've got great leadership in our, with our general manager and president and and, and our ownership, uh, our, our owner's mother, by the way, just passed away today or last night. So we're, we're kind of mourning that right now. She, she was kind of the queen of the national football league and, you know, anyways. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it, just listening to you, it sounds like they just become part of your family. Mm -hmm. all no, no, they are. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're all good kids. That's the thing. They come in, we have a little saying at the front door, you come in as teammates, you leave as family. So they're seeing that every day. And, and that's the way they're treated. I, I, want, I want it to be a good work environment. I, I want them to be able to come in and not be so uptight that they're, they're worried about being screamed and hollered at, but that they can concentrate on learning and trying to be the best they can be and make a living at it. And uh, the, there's, a, you know, there's a lot of merit to that. I don't think any of us like to get screamed at and yelled at. I, we want to be taught and corrected and and then see if we can maximize ourselves as as humans and as as players in this case as players. Uh, and you know, if we can take a little bit to be a better human being with us, uh, that's even better. So, well said. Have you had the opportunity to mentor some of your players, like Coach Edwards did for you? I have. Listen, I've been lucky. I've I've had a lot of assistants go on to be head coaches. Um, you know, we, we played one of them. Well, we played a couple, a couple of them, uh, Sean McDermott for Buffalo, who's got a real good football team. And then, um, and he's a fellow redhead. I've lost all my red hair, but he was a fellow redhead. So I'm really partial to the redheads. And then, uh, Doug Peterson, who was with me, uh, actually, and, and he played for me and then he was with me at Kansas city and, and, uh, and now, uh, Philadelphia, he won a world, uh, um, a world championship at, at, at Philadelphia and now he's at Jacksonville. So both of those two have got tremendous football teams. 
Uh, Eric Bieniemy, who played for me, is now uh, the offensive coordinator at, at uh, the Washington Redskins. And um, so, anyways, the list goes on. We, we, I've, I've been in it long enough to where I've got a lot of guys that I've been able to, uh, you know, have go on and, and do other things and and great things in this league, and uh, that are just good good human beings too, and they they try to do it the right way, which is which is a uh, Again, that's my badge of honor. <laughs> that, that's that's fantastic. It's awesome to have such a big circle. It's wonderful. So, so going back to, of course, your mentor, Lavelle Edwards, what's one of the most important lessons that maybe you learned from him? Yeah, so when he was kicking me out the door to go be a, a coach uh, at um, at San Francisco State, he said, "Listen, when you go when you go to that, you're you're a coach now." You're, you're instead of a graduate assistant coach, you're a coach. And so when you go to the head coach with a problem, have a well thought out answer. And I said, OK, let me think about that for a second. But but that can be used in all all parts of life when you really think about it. So don't just go in blind. But if you've got a problem, think about it before you go to that person that can be used with the head coach uh, that you're working uh, for. You can do that. That's fine. Or the boss. Uh, but you can also do that with with your wife. You can do it with your children. Um, and the person might not agree with it. They might not agree with your solution, but uh, you, you've at least put some thought into it. And, you know, normally when somewhere in your thinking process, when when you're um, a member of the church, you, you, that gets in there into the thought process. And so, uh, so not that you're saying it's faith-based, but because you're living your, your religion, then it comes out in, in a certain way, a presentable way and, and a humble way. And, and so, um, for a simple little question like that, or a, a simple little statement that he gave me, uh, I mean, it's helped me all through this, uh, maze of life here that, that we're going through. So it, it's been great. What's some of the best advice you give your players? Is it the same as what Coach Edwards gave to you? Or? Yeah, so I, I have this thing that I've, I've put up on the, the ceiling in our locker room. And, um, and, and so it, it says, there are four things. So it says, el eliminate distractions. So we all have them. We all have these distractions. So you have an opportunity to come in this building uh, and, and and go to work, eliminate those distractions and focus in on that job at hand um, and then create energy. So am I going to be an energy giver or am I going to be an energy taker? So I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm not real good with guys that um, or people in general that are just whoa, every day. They, they drain you. They, they take and they dismantle your spirit <laughs> or attempt it. So I, I want I want people that that, that are going to kind of bring it every day and and try to maximize ourselves. And I do I tell the players I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give you my best every day. And if I don't, let me know. Let me know. And so um, so eliminate distractions, create energy, and then fear nothing, attack everything. That's three and four. Fear nothing, attack everything. So we all have fears. We all have fears, but we can minimize those fears. By attacking those and and not sitting there letting those control our life, and in a contact sport like we have, there's a tremendous amount of pressure uh, uh, from that fear level. And uh, but let's go let's go ahead and get you good at at some of these things so that you don't you don't fear. But let's attack that. Let's attack the modes that maybe you're not quite good enough at, and we can we can get you better. And these things are all uh, when I picture when I picture Christ. I picture Christ if he came back today uh, and wanted to play in the National Football League, that he'd be a middle linebacker. He'd be the toughest guy on the team. You know, and th those four things are kind of how he would go about doing business in, a, in that locker room, right? I mean, those four things, he, he uh, you know, we saw what he did in the temple. He, he took care of business in there. And, and, and so, um, you know, th that, that's how I, you know, that, anyways, that, that sits at the top of our, uh, in our locker room. And I, I bank on those things. I've heard players. I, I mean, uh, I had a 
all pro safety who came down with cancer and he 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 said this he said it out publicly I, you know fear nothing i'm attacking this thing i i had alex smith that was eric berry by the way was the safety alex smith who was a, a tremendous quarterback university of utah product I, I don't hold that against him i i like utah now my son i had a son graduate from there so i'm okay um uh but um you, you know i heard him i i was on the phone with him and i i said um listen, this is after he hurt his, his leg. You know, he broke his leg, shattered his leg with the Washington Redskins. I mean, this thing was a mess. It took him forever to come back from it. They had to put it together. He had infections. It was deformed. It was just a mess. And he was bound and determined he was going to play again. I said, you don't have to play. You've done everything. You're 12, 14 year vet, whatever he was. I said, you've seen it all, done it all. And he goes, fear nothing, attack everything. I go, okay, go play. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, uh, I've heard players come back, you know, the, the, and, and use those things. Um, and, and, and they come to work every day with this great attitude. And I appreciate that they're, they're, they're bringing the energy and, and you need that you need it in life. You need it at work. And, um, and they're, they have, listen, these kids have a lot of distractions. Like I said, they, they come from various, you know, areas of the country and various economic groups. And my goodness, they, they have a ton of problems like we all have and and uh and, and even more so at times so uh to just come and come to a place where you can kind of drop that and get yourself focused on the job at hand let's go let's go thank you <laughs> i love that yeah. okay tammy if that's if that's the um mantra in the locker room do you have one for your for your home I do. Actually, uh, when I figured out that he was going to keep moving me every three, three, two, one years, <laughs> I decided that I would bloom where I'm planted. And so that's my mantra is just bloom where you're planted. And I, when I give speeches and things to other coaches, wives and players, wives, I say, that's what we need to do. You just, you don't know if you'll be there one season or 14 seasons. So enjoy the area, go explore where you live, uh, see all the things that you can do there and enjoy the people and the things and the food and the just bloom right there where you are and then leave a little bit of yourself and go on to the next place. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. What great advice for all of us. <laughs> so coach, one of the questions that we, that actually one of the missionaries uh, asked me to ask you was, what advice do you have for young people who are trying to chase a dream and still try to follow Christ at the same time? How do you balance that when you're young or trying to chase something like a football career or anything yeah. like that? So chase that son of a gun and let Christ lead the way. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> how I see it, right? Um, we, we all uh, have this Holy Ghost that, that comes with us and is, is with you as long as you do right. And so... Um, Let's go ahead and listen to that and let's go forward and put ourselves in that attack mode. Let's go, go be what you want to be and get into something you love to do. So it's not um, drudgery going to work every day and you can, you'll be better off at home. You'll uh, be better off with people around you. And I think that we also have told our kids, nothing is set in granite. If you go to one school and you don't love it, finish it up that semester and then let's go to a different one. Or if you don't love the job that you started with, change jobs and go to a different one. It, everything is not concrete. You can change things if you decide you want to. And we pray about everything in our the careers and things in our lives. And I think that's what has gotten us where we need to be. And just listen to that still small voice and do that next thing that you need to do. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I'd add to that because, you know, you always see, that's a great point. You always see, um, uh, well, you don't always see it, but you see a lot of people that are faith-based and then they, they get a little bit of fame and they kind of forget about that and uh, go a different direction. So, you know, we're going to let Christ lead us. We've also got to listen and stay humble to him as we do it. So um I, I think that ends up being important and i i talked i've always had members of the church on the team and i try to talk to those guys about that i talk to the guys about being humble uh but then uh, i'll talk to the the members you know just 
as you work here, you know, don't forget where you came from and, and the foundation in which you've built. And this is when you really want to bank on that foundation. And, um, and it's great to, you know, the money, the, the, the glamour and all that, that's all, that's all wonderful, but, um, let's not, let's not forget what's real. So. Have you, have you had a chance over the years to share your faith with any of people that you've uh, coached or worked with? Yeah. So I have a couple of things I tell the players day one, uh, the team, um, and that's money, religion, and women that in a locker room can be trouble. I, I'd probably throw politics in there too, but um, <laughs> you start forcing those things on people, yeah. not so good. Um, then you get the separation in the locker room. Uh, but if somebody asks you about any of those, uh, within reason, uh, go ahead and share it with them. But let them ask you. Don't, don't force it on them. So sure, I've had people, um, I've had players ask, I've had coaches ask about it. Um, but again, we, we try to not, not force it on people at all, uh, as we go forward now. Yeah. Well said, well said. Okay. Curious when you're not doing football, what do you like to do? Yeah, well, I do a lot of football. Um, so <laughs> I, and I've got a lot of grandkids. So we go, we normally, it's something around the grandkids, uh, whether it's a little league game or you know, whatever it might be, uh, soccer or dance or whatever it might be, we're, we're going and we're going to try to support, uh, support them. Um, and then that means you go to the batting cages or you do whatever else is included in that, throw some pitches, work the football part. I got a little guy that's the oldest one is playing football now. So, you know, we, <laughs> sure he's got the right equipment and so on. So he can go to this thing, but most of it surrounds the kids. Now, when I was raising my, my kids, we, we would take fishing trips, love to fish. And uh, we only get a little bit of time off in the, in the NFL, but we try to use that and center it around the family, you know, as we, as we do it. But there are a lot of things I like to do, but I, it's hard to, you know, some of the things are a little bit hard to do, uh, you know, as you go. But. <laughs> That's awesome. You must be a big influencer, though. I imagine your whole family loves football. Well, they do that, but that doesn't mean they're all good. They're going to be good at it. I, I, we keep an open mind. We're not forcing anybody to do it. Um, we love all sports. We understand the strength in sports, microcosm of life, and you have different challenges there. If you choose to go that route, um, just do it to the best of your ability. We're not all blessed to be great athletes. I mean, that's not, uh, that's not what we're expecting, but just do it to the best of your ability and then find something you like. And it doesn't have to be in the sports world. It could be playing the piano or anything else. Find, find what you like and let's go. That is such great advice. Well, we, uh, we're kind of coming clo close to the end of our little uh, podcast tonight. Tammy, do you want to share anything of your feelings about your faith and hope in Christ and to end here? Well, you know what? I think that just, being a, a light to others. I mean, I pray about that. I, I'm like, just let me be a light to someone else this day so that people can see maybe my faith and draw from it if they need to. And uh, I've always said we are great collectors of people. We love, we've collected people in all the states we've lived in, eight states. And uh, we sent out 1,100 Christmas newsletters. Oh, wow. And so it's been fun to collect all these people and just share just life with them and and in the church out of the church in football out of football just great people all over the united states of america so i guess that's it just share your light with others and and help people get through whatever they need to get through we all have a lot of challenges these days and we all need to draw from each other and pull strength from each other some different times yeah thank you awesome. coach how about you any last comments about your faith in christ and hope in him yeah. So, um, well, first of all, he's phenomenal. Like I said, he, he's uh, the things that he did will obviously never be matched. And in pro football and sports, you, you always look at that. I mean, you're looking for, for the real goat out there, the greatest of all time. And, and that was Christ, obviously. So, um, but, he, but the great part is he, he left us a, a plan, a game plan. And, you know, if we follow that, which we try to do, uh, good things happen and we'll have a chance to return to him someday. And that, 
that's a comforter for us uh, as you go through life. It's, life has got, like we, we've said, life has got challenges. We've all got them. Uh, but again, as long as we stay on track, we're, we're going to be, we know we're going to be okay. And, and so, you know, we fight to make sure we do that and give it our best, best shot and stay positive with it. So, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. We appreciate, um, we appreciate you spending this time with us and sharing your stories, your experiences and your great advice, um, and for sharing your light with, with us. I, I just want to tell you how much we appreciate the influence that you've had for good in, in this world. We appreciate it. Yeah. We appreciate you guys doing this. This I, I know you touch a lot of lives out here with this and, you know, we hope everybody can take a little bit away from it and just make their life a little bit better and, um, and keep rolling. So it's good. That is the hope. And we appreciate your good advice. Well, thank you to everyone who joined us on Road to Open Peace tonight. We know that you have been inspired by the reads as they have shared their belief in Christ with us. We invite you to join us for our next Why I Believe on July 22nd with Alex Boye as our special guest. Please like and follow our page, My Road to Open Peace, for more inspirational content. Good night, everyone. Good night.